Hi everyone. In this video, I'll give a quick update on the 3D printable isomorphic keyboard overlay design. Versions 2 and 3 were good steps forward, but I found that it still didn't quite provide comparable ergonomics to the traditional piano keyboard. Some fingerings still required contorting my fingers awkwardly. For example, when playing a major 7th chord in root position, my pinky would need to reach forward uncomfortably to reach the 7th, and my middle finger on the 5th needed to bend awkwardly. One solution would be to stretch the layout so that each key is longer and there's more vertical overlap. Unfortunately, the keys quickly become too heavy for the underlying keyboard if they stick out much towards the player. My next idea to solve this was tiered key tops. Keys could be extended underneath their enharmonic equivalents, giving them a longer front-to-back footprint while not increasing the length of the whole overlay key. But I had to increase the vertical space between tiers so much to comfortably slide my finger into the gap that it wasn't easy to get each finger to the right height. Also, once you reached into the backs of those lower tiers, you needed to pull your fingers out away from the keyboard before moving them up or sideways, which wasn't ideal. It was around this point that I overhauled the design to take advantage of Kurt Hutton's Round Anything OpenSCAD library. Before using this library, I was translating and rotating differences between rectangular prisms and cylinders to the edges of the model to round its edges, and that was an absolute mess. Round Anything took care of that for me automatically and also got me thinking in a more traditional CAD mindset where instead of combining various shapes like cubes and cylinders, you define a 2D shape and then extrude that shape into 3D. Here's that simpler design with its edges rounded using Round Anything. Throughout these trials and errors, I gained an appreciation for the design of the black keys on the traditional piano keyboard. Their taper makes it so that your finger has an easier time finding the white keys in between them, and then conversely, their thinner tops are not really an issue because they're sticking out above their adjacent white keys. I wondered if I still might be able to incorporate those features in my overlay. Since an isomorphic keyboard's keys are all the same shape, each key would need to have the features of a black key and a white key distributed where they're most relevant. This was my first attempt. See how each key top has a section where it's thin and higher than its half-note neighbors, like a black key, and also has a wider section, still connected to neighboring major seconds, with a thin section lower than its surrounding notes, like a white key. But I never got this exact design printed. Uh, instead, it was at this point that I switched to using Onshape. While OpenSCAD had served me well up until this point, I never really learned how to use its full potential. Instead, I hacked things together to get a viable prototype and generated OpenSCAD files with a Java program when I wanted to implement more complex logic. I'm sorry, OpenSCAD, I never gave you the chance you deserved. Here's the first result I'd like to share from after switching to Onshape. It's effectively the previous design, but I eliminated the skew by offsetting the thick middle sections of the key. I also included only half of the key tops for the sharps and flats, since if you don't have double sharps or double flats, your hand doesn't need to reach the closer half of the flats or the further half of the sharps. The weakness of these key shapes was that their thicker sections forced the keys to be much shorter, and so this design didn't deal with the depth-related fingering issues. Also, I found the thicker sections difficult to hit accurately, being offset from each other both vertically and horizontally. So I did away with this thicker middle section altogether, and ended up with this design. I like it so far, but I haven't spent much time with it yet. You'll notice I moved the metal rod further back away from the player so that it doesn't take up valuable space over the underlying key surface. This is compatible with most electric keyboards, but wouldn't fit on most acoustic pianos. Throughout this process, I was also experimenting with various other things. For example, I've gone back and forth several times on the print orientation of the keys, though I think I've settled on printing them on their sides. The print is just much more reliable and much less wasteful in terms of support material. I also tried several two-part designs, including one with a single base section per octave that extends back into the housing of the underlying keyboard and flexes instead of rotating around a metal rod. It was much cleaner looking, but required taking apart the keyboard to install. The keys were also much more wobbly since the part that flexes also twisted. That idea is just on the back burner for now. What's next? I'm not sure, but this project was overdue for an update, so thanks for watching.